Welcome to Airheads. Coming up, Hawk Scope Review with Phil Price. Terry has a word. You can be trusted to hold it. Good word, Terry. Darren is trialling trail cam. James Martington is his own worst enemy. First, the ABC of HFT. Does HFT stand for Hairy Feral Top Shots? No, it does not. It stands for Hunter Field Target, and today is all about inspiring air gun owners everywhere to get off their bottoms, kneel down, lie down, and stand up for a sport that this lot love. HFT. Love HFT. And they will welcome you with open arms, won't they, Roger? Welcome to Buxid HFT. Today we're going to have a look at an HFT competition, meet some of the characters, of which there are lots and lots, and see why people love this sport so much. We join Roger on the morning session of the competition. He and the rest of his team are coping well with the windy conditions, but the winner will be the shot who is on these targets like a tramp on chips. Former HFT champion Chris Cundy is shooting alongside Roger at Buxted in Sussex today. He, like many others, travel all over the country and Europe to compete. He believes we have a lot to be grateful for. I've shot in uh, Belgium and the Netherlands and they're very restrictive on the land because most of the free land they have, it goes predominantly to shotgun shooting and full bore because that's where the money is. So when you go and shoot over there and then you come back over to the UK and you see how the clubs are run, how the people are, how they behave, the land that we've got, the grounds that we've got, and you think, wow, we're lucky. We are so lucky. You've got uh, pigeons and kestrels and squirrels in the trees and you don't even shoot a shot for almost an hour. Do you just sit there on I, the I, 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 Yeah, I read, I read my Keats. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, just, I just sit there and look around and just think, where else would you, would you rather be? Throughout the day, there's plenty of chat and leg pulling amongst the competitors. Rude. And that's as much of a reason for Chris travelling hundreds of miles as pulling the trigger. And I like to always to shoot against the guys and there's always people I want to beat. But it's just seeing old friends. I miss it through the winter. Back to the competition and Roger explains why a horn has blown. What's happened now is uh, obviously the hoot has gone off one. Well, one blast, which means there's a ceasefire. So there could be a problem with the target, or someone's calling this or calling that. They can call the target at any time. Or it could be a bit of bracken that's blown in front of the target, which makes it unshootable. So what they've done is, they're obviously they're gonna walk out, make sure it, check the target, ready to go. When we hear two blasts again, off we go again. Brilliant. Sooner the better, if you ask me. I just wanna get out there, and I've only got a couple of targets left, and we're doing okay, so it's really exciting. It's just to it get your adrenaline going, which is the worst thing, obviously, because your heart rate goes up, but I'm just trying to, yeah, keep it going. I'm loving it. There are some very smart rifles on show. Most are pre-charged pneumatics, though there are some who like to make life hard for themselves. Kyle here might look 40, but is in fact 21 and is sporting a beard for a bet. He's one of the best air gun shots in the world and chooses to wind up the rest of the field by being a smarty pants and shooting a springer. I find it more of a challenge because I'm like a bit of full bore shooting and it's more realistic, you get a bit of recoil, you have to concentrate harder and if you make any mistakes it will come back and bite you really. So it's 100% concentration and especially when you beat the PCP boys, they don't like it. You, you won't find a, a friendlier sport than HFT, you cannot find a friendlier sport. The, the, I would say a rude word, but the banter between the shooters is unrivalled in any other sport. We do know how to take the mick out of each other. We're not kick shy, we won't like say, oh this is my gun, you're not allowed to use it. Anyone can come up and use any of our guns and we'll talk them through it, we'll teach them and coach them as best as we can. Because at the end of the day, we want some competition, we want, we want the guys shooting well and we like to see people enjoying themselves. Given the conditions, the shots are putting in some good scores. All of them have accurate kit, but there are a few tricks of the trade that can make the difference between a hit and a miss. That target, it looked like about 40 yards, but I gave it a little bit less because it looks like the pellets are being blown up. So I gave it a little bit less and it, it worked out a treat, thank goodness. HFT is a family sport. 14-year-old Tom Willingham is part of Roger's team and shoots alongside his dad, Steve. Hey Tom, how you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. So how's this round going so far for you? Good? Yeah, pretty good. I've had, I've had better, but I've had a lot, lot worse as well. So. That is true, you have. 
just some terrors. But anyway, no, you're enjoying it though, yeah? Yeah, it's pretty Excellent stuff, mate. Okay. Really cool. Well, I'll tell you what, that standing shot, hopefully that's on film, because that was tremendous. Yeah, cheers. Well done, mate. Have a good day, yeah? With the afternoon session halfway through, we leave Roger, who has some good news. So today, buxton has been brilliant. 54 I scored today, so I'm very, very happy with that. The rest of the BSA team did really, really well as well. Um, tricky conditions today, windy as you like. But the best part about today is we pick up the manufacturer's winning ward from the last event where BSA came tops. Fantastic. Congratulations to Team Roger. And there you have it, behind the hair and the camo, there's an enthusiastic bunch of air rifle nuts who just want to have a good time and some good competition, and they will welcome you into the fold like a long-lost brother or sister. For more information, look up UK HFT online or at the game fairs, perhaps join your local club and start practicing because, if nothing else, it will make you a better hunter. Thank you, Roger. Now from a sharpshooter to a blunt tool, it's David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. The Law Society of Scotland has joined the attack on new Scottish air gun laws. The Air Weapons and Licensing Scotland Bill seeks to control access to air weapons. Lawyers warn that new powers to license air guns in Scotland are impractical and will not reduce crime. They say that proposals put forward by the Scottish Government will lead to a situation where weapons are untraceable and the exact total held not known. The Diana Group has bought the popular air gun scope manufacturer MTC Optics. Diana, which is owned by the Italian Morocci family, already consists of Breeder and Morocci shotguns, as well as Daystate and Brocock in the UK. MTC's existing management team of the last eight years, Gary and Sammy Cooper, will remain with the company for the foreseeable future. Your Guns is having a busy season. It's taken the company two years to get the Bakel MP654K Makarov nickel, and now they've sold 20 in two days. Their recommended retail price is £169.95. Crosman is selling one of its guns in aid of the Navy SEAL Foundation. The package for sale includes the Benjamin Armada Special Edition air gun with accessories by Magpul, Surefire, Tarjack and Zeiss Sports Optics. The Navy SEAL Foundation benefits the families of US Special Forces, not US aquatic animals. We all know that squirrels can be a nuisance, but their new target appears to be pandas. Toronto Zoo has uploaded a video showing the moment a squirrel jumped on top of its panda, Air Shun, while she was napping. She went back to sleep shortly afterwards. And finally, what do you do when you see a man standing naked in a central reserve in Kazakhstan? You shoot him with an air gun, of course. So far, the police have been unable to shed any light on the random incident, which has gone viral across the country. But they have arrested the victim. A spokesman said while it is against the law to discharge firearms in this way, he should not have been where he was, doing what he was doing. The spokesman would not confirm what he was doing. You are now up to date with Hot Air, aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you, David. Now these journo types get some lovely kit to play with. Phil Price has a new hawk. I'm just out doing some testing and I thought I'd show you this scope that I've been using for quite a while. It's Hawk's new Air Max 30 side focus. It's a 4 to 16 by 50 which is a little bit bigger than I would normally choose, but it's kind of their flagship scope. And it's really got everything they've come up with as their kind of top of the line optic. It's got the best glass, it's got the best coatings, all the features you could want, and a very wide range of um, magnification from four right round to 16. So I've got this actually fitted on my 32 foot pound gun, which says on FAC. And I do tend to shoot a bit further with this on still days, not like today when it's so windy. Uh, and I do like the uh, fine reticle, it allows very, very precise aiming. One of the things they've done on this one, the um, illumination control is stepless. So you, as you turn it, there's an infinite adjustability um, rather than going in great big jumps. I generally use them set as low as possible. I find too much illumination just simply dazzles you. So I set that on a very, very low setting and it works very well for me. It's got excellent glass. Uh, with such a fine reticle, I'd normally find that you can struggle a bit. If you look up into a tree and there's squirrels and pigeons and things you want to go after, you can lose a really fine reticle. But with this one, being able to illuminate it, and just because it's got such good image quality, I haven't struggled with that at all. 
You'll notice it's got exposed adjuster turrets. Well, on the top of here is a lock. I'm always concerned that if you set this, put it into the slip and it pushes and turns the dial, you'll lose your zero and you won't know. By locking these down, you can be very confident that that's, uh, that's gonna be set next time you take it out. It's got some very nice metal flip-up covers that are a permanent fixture, so you don't have to worry about forgetting them. And as the name suggests, side wheel parallax adjustment. Um, you can get an oversized side wheel for it if you want to use it more as a competition scope. And I know a few guys, um, Field Sports' own Roger Lake has been using one of these on HFT and he's been getting some very good results with it too. So um, yes, very interesting. The scope I've been using for a while and I'm going to keep using for quite a while longer. Next up our very own Captain Walking Pace, it's James Marchington. Since I got back from Scotland, I've been topping up my bait station with peanuts and grain every day. There's all sorts of quarry species taking advantage, from pigeons, crows and jays to the inevitable grey squirrels. This pair of squirrels has moved in and claimed it as their territory, and they're quite aggressive about defending it. They'll even chase off the bigger birds like the crows. At this time of year, they spend a lot of time scurrying about burying nuts and seeds in the grass. These parakeets have shown up too. They're also on the quarry list, but even though they're destroying the fruit trees, I can't do anything about it unless they'll come down where I can get a safe shot. I'll have to try putting out some different bait for them. Some sort of fruit, perhaps. Meanwhile, I've got another Crossman air rifle to test. This one's a Phantom Mark II. It's a brake barrel action with a nicely shaped black plastic stock. It's a 12 foot pound rifle powered by a nitro piston, which makes it really smooth to shoot and quite quiet too. It comes with a good solid one piece mount and a three to nine power parallax adjustable scope. I'd only just finished zeroing the new gun when this squirrel arrived at the feeder. It seemed too good an opportunity to miss. But before I could take a shot, it jumped down again. It had only gone to look for spilt grain and sat up right in front of my zeroing target. Not a very smart move. Well, that frightened the parakeets off, but before long, this magpie came along. I like to use headshots on squirrels and rabbits, but with birds, I find a body shot works best. They move their heads about more, so the body's an easier target. Plus, birds are more lightly built, so a solid hit in the body will usually knock them down well. It certainly worked on this magpie. Thank you, James. Now, trail cams have revolutionized the way we see our quarry. They're available in HD and they're almost invisible. I've been using the spy point cameras for a long time now and the multitude of uses is unbelievable. The latest technology of these cameras which have got the what they call the black flash, you get no visible illumination. You can use them for security cameras uh, around the farm for seeing if you've got trespassers or, or burglars. But obviously the main use that we use them for is for wildlife observation. And predominantly I've always used them for fox shooting. And we put the cameras out in a predetermined place with some bait. It just saves us a lot of time that you know when a fox is going to appear at a location um, to save a lot of sitting around or a lot of unnecessary driving around. But what I wanted to demonstrate on this piece of film is how useful they are even for air rifle shooters. I knew that we had a rat problem uh, around some of the feeders, so I took the opportunity that I just deployed the camera. Um, and it just gives you an absolute heads up of what time of day or night or both that the, the vermin is there. So instead of me assuming that rats are completely nocturnal was going to go over one evening and do this shooting, it was evident that the rats were as busy during the daytime as they are of an evening time. So it was a lot more comfortable and relaxing on a nice afternoon to go lay out and enjoy some rat shooting uh, with the benefit of the spy point camera telling me where the rats were and what time they were about. 
They're absolutely loaded with all types of software that tells you the moon phase, that tells you the temperature. You can set the length of video, the quality of the video. You can set individual still photographs, multiple still photographs. And with most of these modern ones now, the battery life, cameras like the spy points you'll get you know 12 months use out of a single set of batteries and i think with this spy point one it's 60 foot detection range so you get a good nighttime image even out to 60 foot you've got a lcd display inside you, you don't have to remove the sd card to review your footage you can review it all on the screen and it's got a, a simple menu setting that even roy lupton could use <laughs> You just press set up and, you, you know, and it just takes you through time, date, whether you want to be in videos, photographs. Yeah, but I think what we'll do is actually we'll give this to Roy and see if he can actually get some footage of a fox. Next up, Terry has another question from a member of the royal family, Your Highness. Tiger Tell, the greatest truth I've learned as a royal is that the chap who is winning at strip billiards is the one with the camera. Tell one, what's the most important air gun lesson you were taught as a boy? Never show me up. When I was a child, the way you made your name was to be trustworthy so that your father handed you his shotgun um, for a couple of seconds and you could be trusted to hold it, you wouldn't wave it around, you wouldn't act badly with it and then you'd be trusted to go out in the hunting field and bring home food for the family and your uncles and fathers and big cousins and stuff would look at you and say that boy's good, he can feed the family. Thank you Terry, last up it's the best on offer on YouTube for our gunners it is, air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my weekly roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Lots from the USA this week. American Air Gunner 2014 Episode 2 has action too numerous to mention. 25 minutes of reviews and hunts. Air Guns of Arizona sponsored the 2014 United States Air Rifle Benchrest National Championship in Phoenix, Arizona. Here's their own roundup. Staying in the USA, the great Ted of Holdover does it again. It's a 150 yard pigeon shot with an air rifle. This is the short version. Next up, how to make your own compressed air gun. And check your local rule book. Back in the UK, Hunter's Vermin is on a farm that has a particular Corvid problem. His own trouble is getting a safe, clear shot. Airgun Gear Show has its paws on an SMK XS38 underlever. Accuracy and for just £150. Cy and Davy give the Sandwell Field Sports imp and outing. Tongues in their cheeks. And finally, it's sad news from Malk and Lisa. Time to say goodbye from Country Pursuits TV, the original British airgun channel. Here's its swan song. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description if you would like to send in a video for air streaming ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well we are back in a couple of weeks thank you for watching this has been airheads goodbye